we're wrapping up fire prevention week, and this is especially timely too, as there are some cold nights ahead in C's forecast. That means families will be looking for ways to keep their homes warm. But before you plug in that space heater or flip on the furnace, there are a few things that you need to check. So to help us all stay safe this season, Tim Frankenberg joins us. He is a fire safety engineer for Ameren, Missouri, as well as the fire chief in Washington, Missouri. So we have a couple small space heaters right here. What do people need to do with these before they plug them in? Before you even plug them in, make sure that it's an approved device. So make sure it was approved by a testing laboratory. So there's a there's a mark on them. And so when you buy the device, look for the safety mark. And that's a product safety mark that this device has been tested and it is it is product safe. The next thing is we want three foot of space. Okay, so that so way, well, let's show how much three foot is. Is that about that far? Okay. Exactly. And the reason we want that space is that is a heat producing device. We don't want it up next to the furniture or a bed or a mattress or something like that. That could cause a fire. So we want to give that device some space, plug it directly in the wall. You don't want to put this in extension cords. You know, even though these extension cords may look like the same cord as that, they don't have the ability to carry the same amount of power as that particular cord. So this cord will heat up and actually potentially cause a fire either in the wall or where it's plugged in. You shared one important reminder with me that caught my attention. We can only plug in one heat creating appliance into an outlet. Is that right? Absolutely. So space heaters and toasters cannot go. Yes, we don't do the space heater in a coffee maker or a, or a crock pot or something like that. We got to okay. keep those devices separated so we don't overheat that circuit. Let's talk about if our houses use natural gas for heat. I mean, that is an odorless gas. So how do we know if there's a problem? Well, natural gas is treated with mercaptan. So it's, a, it's an odor that, that you smell. It's like rotten eggs. And so if you smell that, uh, call 911. Leave your residence, call 911, and then uh, they will contact the gas company and have them come check it out for you. Okay, the holidays, they're going to be here before we know it. We're all going to be pulling out the Christmas lights, but there are a few things we need to do, right, before Abs we hang them up. Absolutely. Make sure that we're using the correct cords. Uh, again, this type of cord is not made. This is an indoor cord only. So, so look at the cords. Buy ones that are rated for outdoors. Um, make sure that we're they're keeping them out of water. And, and if you're going to be... Uh, pushing more. We don't want to be putting all overloading it and looking like Clark Griswold and plugging in multiple plugs and surge protectors and surge strips into things to uh, to just keep building on to our display. Yeah, so even if it looks like there's enough space in those, don't max it out. Real quick, any other uh, safety issues that might surprise our viewers when it comes to fire danger? Absolutely. One of the things that we've seen is, is cords underneath rugs or cords underneath some places where you wouldn't see it. And what happens is, is those cords start to heat up, particularly as you're using them. Uh, extension cords are temporary, so use them for the temporary use that you're using for, then unplug them to make them safe. Uh, when they're under rugs, they heat up, they can continue to heat up, they can get frayed, you won't see it, and create a fire danger that way. Really appreciate that reminder, so important right now. Tim, thank you again for joining thank us you, today. Thank you.